Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel, my name's Dave K, and I hope you're having a good week. It's been a couple of weeks since I've made a video, I've had a bit of a nasty bug or something like that, a uh, sicky bug or whatever it was. Uh, anyway, I'm alright now, and it's getting colder on the morning, uh, two degrees it was other morning, which is cold, so we're definitely getting into autumn, the leaves are here, I've got my fleecy on, so, uh, but we're nice and warm in here. So, um, so let's crack on. Today, we've got in the workshop, we've got a YT Industries decoy e-bike. This is a shred version, which is the, the higher end uh, with a Fox 38s and the X2 shock on it, uh, XT Shimano 12 speed. And it's got an EP8 motor in it, which is uh, one of the, well, it's the brand new uh, EP8 uh, motor that Shimano have brought out not too long ago. So a few people have asked if we can do a little bit more information, if we can do a little bit of a, a better video on um, diagnosing e-bike problems, error codes, uh, and what, from a, from a dealer point of view, from a, a service technical point of view, what's the process and what's the procedure that we follow when we get error codes on bikes, particularly ones that we can't fix uh, in the workshop and what we do and how we sort it out. So let's crack on. So the customers brought this lovely YT. I really like this bike. It's a really nice looking bike and it's got the EP8 motor. Now, he's saying that even after it's done 150 miles, that he's getting the error message, um, EO50, um, on the display. Now, the difference, let me explain a little bit about the differences between error messages, because there is quite a lot of confusion of what error messages mean, and there's quite a lot of them. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, hopefully, you'll never get many. Um, but the difference, there's two sorts of messages that you can get on Shimano displays. Uh, one starts with W. Now, if the error message starts with W, that means basically it's a temporary uh, problem or a fault or a warning, if you like. OK, it's a notification to say something's happened uh, and I've logged it and here's what's happened, whatever that means. Uh, it might be W010 or it might be W11 or it, it could be quite a number of things. A full list of, uh, of error codes, Shimano error codes, I'll put down in the description before so you can have a look at them. And that'll tell you what they actually mean. Certain things are easier to fix than others. Uh, but all of them really shouldn't be ignored. Whatever error message that you're getting, you should either look into it, look into it further or get someone to look into it for you. Take it to a, a Shimano dealer and uh, we'll look into it and see what's going on. We do have access to a lot more information than a consumer would. We have technical support uh, for Shimano, for steps uh, and e-bike stuff. We have a direct contact for them. So we can talk to them and find out and get some advice on what they think and what we need to be doing next. Um, and so it's a little bit easier for us. But there's a process that we follow uh, when we get uh, a fault on an e-bike. So let's look at this one to begin with. It, we've got EO50. Now the E stands for, it's quite a major, major fault basically. It's one that's been logged. It's... Um, it's one that we shouldn't ignore, and it usually means that your bike's going to go into some kind of limp mode. I don't know whether you've been in your car and your, your engine lights come on in your car. Uh, quite often, if that happens, the engine can go into limp mode and it only gives you a certain amount of power. Well, a very similar thing happens when you get an e-message on your display on your Shimano. We can have a look at it in diagnostics. Uh, but generally speaking, it's usually a little bit more in-depth uh, than a W message, than a, an error message beginning with W. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously find out from the customer if there's a specific 
a set time or a time in the ride or is there something that they're doing a, a particular stage of the ride that causes this message to come up um, if not then obviously we can uh, look on the diagnostics and find out uh, how many times it's come up um, and what it's suggesting that we do about it. Um, it hopefully the customer will bring the bike in with the error message already showing. Now what happens when you get e-messages is that generally if you take the battery out and disconnect the motor completely and put it back in then you'll generally find that if it, unless it's proper major, that error message will, will clear itself, it'll reset itself. Um, but if it's a common, if it's a common, if it's happening again, then not too long, not, not, not too long after on your next ride, it'll appear again. So what we need to do is, first of all, uh, let's plug this bike in. Let's have a look and see what the diagnostics are saying. Uh, and then we can go from there. Okay, so let's connect the bike up to the PC. There's a spare port in the back of the display. So we'll just clip it in there. We'll boot the bike up. Just turn that on. Wait for that to boot up and then we'll click next. And hopefully uh, the system will read what we've got in the bike, uh, what units we've got and whether it's actually working right. So let's just wait for that to finish. And that should display something hopefully good, I hope. Let's have a look. Okay, we'll just get rid of that. First, first thing that we need to do is, let's look at the error log. <clears throat> okay, so as the suggest, customer's suggesting, we've got EO5000 or EO50, uh, unable to use the assist button. Um, have your place of purchase perform the following install the speed sensor and magnet in appropriate locations well that seems to be all right at the minute uh, if the bicycle has uh, been has if the bicycle has been modified restore it to factory settings okay well it hasn't as far as i'm aware uh, and if it's not working after you clear the error after you've ridden the bike uh, or none of the above apply then um call your distributor for assistance. Okay, and we've got the same error message there as well, uh, just a different date and time. Okay, so I think what we'll do is let's perform an error check uh, on the system and we'll just see where we are at the minute uh, and see. So it's showing that these components, uh, we've not performed a, a, an error check on it before, so let's click on those. Okay, and we'll start. Okay, the first thing will be the crank. So it'll ask us to turn it, which it is doing clockwise. No faults can be found. Okay. You click next and it'll ask us to do it again. Okay. No fault can be found. Just stop the back wheel from turning. Click next. Okay, the next thing to do is the light. Okay, is the light on? Well, the bike doesn't have a light. So that suggests to me that there's something wrong in the settings. It, it would probably be that the actual light's enabled when it actually shouldn't be. So the light is on. Well, no, it isn't. Okay, but I'm not going to click no, because if I click no, well, yes, I what? I'll click no, because it is, it is, it's not on and it should be on. So let's let's we know that there's not one, uh, if that makes sense. But we'll look at that in a second. Does the display look like this? Well, yes, it does. Does the display look like this? Well, yes, it does. Is it bleeping? Well, you can probably hear it. So yes, it does. Press and hold the function switch. Okay, no fault can be found there. Press and hold the X button. Okay, press and hold the Y button. No fault can be found. Okay, so error check is complete for all items. So we've got here, does the light work properly? We've classed it as an error because no, it doesn't. But it shouldn't actually be enabled because there's no light on the bike. 
So let's go back to customize, okay? And we'll have a look at the assistance uh, uh, there, which is saying that the assistance is all okay. That's set, but the customer can set that up anyway. The drive unit, okay? Now, this is where it actually tells us that there's a light accessory attached and it's a button operation and it's actually not, okay? So we need to disable that, always off. Okay, and we'll send that back um, to the uh, to the head unit to tell it that it's actually it doesn't have a light. Okay, so the light out output doesn't apply. Maximum assistance speed sixteen mile an hour. Okay, which is the maximum that we can give it. If you noticed on the photograph that I'm going to show you, it actually states that it's twenty mile an hour, but that's obviously for different countries. We can't change this. We can't change that to actually go above 16 mile an hour. Um, what they call it uh, can. Shimano can, but we can't. Um, so we'll go back on to the shifting advice, which doesn't apply to us because this is for electronic, sh electronic shifting. Uh, and the shift button, which we, we all know, is assist up and assist down. Okay, so let's apply all that lot. So let's go back to the drive unit just to make sure that that is always off, okay? Which it is, which is which is how it should which is how it should be. So I think we should go back to maintenance and we'll do another error check. Okay, <clears throat> we'll perform an error check. Okay, now we'll perform it on that one that actually created as error. and see what it gives us now. Okay. What we're doing is we're just repeating what we've done before, but this now shouldn't give us an error because I've turned it off. I'm hoping anyway. Okay. Okay, so no fault could be found, which is perfect, which is exactly what we want, because it's saying that there uh, a fault with the, it was saying that the, there were a light attached and there wasn't. So we've run through diagnostics. We've got no, we've got no uh, error messages there at all. Okay, so we've gone through the diagnostics as you've seen on the computer. Uh, the motor thought there were a light attached because it were enabled in the settings. It could be that the customer's done that by accident uh, and that were giving us an error message on the on the display unit. So we've changed that and now it's not bringing up any error message at all. There is still the error message for the O50 in the log. But I think what we should do now is the procedure should be that let's reset the system uh, I'll re-upgrade the firmware, I'll reinstall the firmware through the diagnostics on the PC just to make sure that they're all up to date back in the system. I know it says that they are, but I'm going to reinstall them anyway. Uh, we'll take the battery out, we'll reset the bike and then we'll give it back to the customer. And we'll ask them to ride it and just see if what we've done actually uh, sorts the error messages out. If it doesn't, then his next step would be to probably replace the speed sensor uh, or the magnet speed sensor. I know it's unlikely that that's going to be faulty, but the system is telling us that it is. So if we were to ring Shimano and, and ask their advice, they'd say, replace the speed sensor and see if that solves your issue. If that doesn't, doesn't solve your issue, then we'll reinvestigate and rethink, okay? So that's the procedure that we'll follow. I'm hoping that, fingers crossed, this customer will jump on his bike, off he'll go, and we won't get any error messages. That's the ultimate goal. So, a quick video, video for you just to explain the differences between the W messages and the E messages. Uh, look through the uh, diagnostic on this particular bike um, 
and I hope that's helped you to try and understand what the processes and procedures are uh, when we come to uh, to look at uh, and diagnosing uh, e-bikes and error messages. So, thanks for watching. Um, I have the next video we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a Shimano motor out of a Lappy air bike. Uh, it's making an horrendous noise. And so we're going to do a video on that. I hope you look forward to that. Um, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. Toodle pip.